25 kilometers north of Da Tong on Shise Liang Hill, known in the past as Fangshan Hill, is the Yonggu tomb of Empress Dowager Feng. She was formerly called Empress Dowager Wen Ming, the wife of the Northern Wei Dynasty's Emperor Wen Chang, Torba Jun. According to the Book of Wei, construction of the tomb started in 481 AD and lasted eight years. Facing south, it stands 22 meters high with a round top and a square base. Measuring 117 meters in length from north to south and 124 meters in width from west to east, it boasts a structured shape and a massive scale and is one of the largest tombs discovered from that era. It stands today still overlooking the one-time capital of the Northern Wei. About one kilometer north of the Yonggu tomb stands a smaller tomb, approximately 13 meters tall, with each side measuring 60 meters in length. It is known as the Wan Yan Hall, the resting place of Tu Ba Hong, Emperor Xiao Wen of the Northern Wei Dynasty and grandson of Empress Dowager Wen Ming. An aerial image reveals a large hole in the top made by long dead grave robbers. However, they would have been disappointed as the tomb is a decoy and Torba Hong wasn't buried there. However, the prominent hole serves as a constant reminder of the bygone era and the tales of three generations, Empress Dowager Feng, Emperor Xianwen and Emperor Xiaowen. Torba Jun, one of the Northern Wei emperors who was a genuine devout Buddhist emperor, initiated the construction of the Yungang Grottoes. His wife, Empress Feng, shared his interest in Buddhism as she was from the state of the Northern Yan, a Buddhist center in the northeastern region during the southern and northern dynasties. Today's Chaoyang in Liaoning province boasts its historical significance as Longchang, the capital of the northern Yan state. The city's landmark is the North Tower in the city center. Built during the Liao dynasty, it succeeded the Su Yan for Tu, a Buddhist pagoda from Empress Dowager Feng's time. The reverence for Buddhism and the construction of the Yungang Grottoes tied Emperor Wen Chang and Empress Feng closely together. In 465 AD, Emperor Wen Cheng passed away aged 26. His wife, Empress Dowager Feng, was only 24. Three days after the funeral, during the ceremonial burning of the Emperor's possessions, she rushed toward the fire, attempting to join her husband in death. Fortunately, she was restrained. Had she succeeded, the history of the Northern Way would have been very different. Was her attempted suicide an expression of grief for her late husband, or was there another reason? Historical records state that just two days after the five-year-old Emperor Xianwen, Tu Ba Hong, succeeded Emperor Wen Chang, 
Prime Minister Yi Hun forged a decree and executed three ministers. He subsequently purged senior officials from the previous reign. Within two months, Yi Hun had gained complete political and military control, placing himself above the emperor. The death of Emperor Wen Chang left the 24-year-old Empress Dowager Feng feeling vulnerable. Facing an alliance formed by various ethnic tribes and a complex web of power, she had no one she could depend on. It was a fearful situation. Amidst the political struggle, the construction of the Yungan grottos continued. After all, building the caves would consolidate the ruler's power, no matter who sat on the throne. At the same time, Empress Dowager Feng gathered strength, preparing to fight back against Prime Minister Yi Hun. It is unclear whether the craftsmen working on Wuzhou Hill could have sensed the increasingly volatile political situation. But one thing is certain, within the caves, the number of Maitreya statues, believed to bring blessings for the future, increased. Ta 然后呢, the rhythmic beating of wooden fish resounds in the temples of Wuzhou Hill, symbolizing people's hope for peace and tranquility during turbulent times. However, peace often only comes after turmoil. On the second day of the second lunar month of 466 AD, Empress Dowager Feng launched a sudden attack and killed Yi Hun. With her main enemy disposed of, she asserted her position behind the young emperor Tu Ba Hong, effectively acting as regent. The once delicate and innocent maidservant had risen to power as the mighty Empress Dowager, seeking a platform for achieving her ambitions. Shortly after, a policy of promoting education at both county and state levels was enacted. Across history, this has been the crucial tool for spreading Chinese culture. The Xianbei people did not have their own written script, so by establishing schools in each county, they infiltrated Han culture throughout the Northern Wei Empire. As Emperor Xian Wen grew into manhood in 467 AD, his first son was born, and the boy was called Tu Ba Hong, as his father had been. After the child's birth, Empress Dowager Feng decided to raise the baby as she had raised Emperor Xian Wen and return the reins of power to him. With little contemplation of her true intentions, Emperor Xian Wen accepted this arrangement. Meanwhile, the Northern Wei's war with the Liu Song dynasty over the region to the north of the Huai He River was progressing favorably. From February 468 AD, Territorial gains were made on all fronts, most particularly in Qingqi, the present-day Shandong region, which came under Northern Wei control. This 
所以它上面的文化就是南朝文化，就是正统的华夏文化，啊，从经学到艺术到各个方面都是这样，啊，所以呢，清齐地区在当时被收归到北魏的手里，啊，那么使得南江南的文化，使得南朝的文化大量的流入了平城。According to Northern Wei custom. After a military conquest, much of the population of the newly taken territory would be relocated to the capital, Pingchang. Since Shandong was also a major Buddhist center at that time, there were numerous monks and craftsmen among the relocated. This not only promoted Buddhism, but also provided a substantial workforce for the construction of the Yungang grottos. In the 1990s, Many Buddhist statues were excavated at the former site of Long Xing Temple in Qingzhou. Among them, the statues from the Northern Wei period are generally slender, representing the typical physique of Han Chinese. It is speculated that craftsmen from Qingzhou and other regions, after mastering the techniques of cave statue construction, developed their own unique style. Cave 16 of Tanyao's five caves was completed against this backdrop. The main Buddha statue inside features a loose gown with a wide girdle, which is believed to be associated with craftsmen from the Central Plains who had joined in the cave construction. A ancient craftsman, a ancient artisan, as a servant, 这是谭耀武库，相比于此前各库，突然抬高了一大块，看过去如此美幻美轮的一个重要背景。他收归清齐这个举动，直接应该说是关系到了这个云冈石窟的修缮，甚至也直接关系到了云冈石窟从此以后的艺术变化。As a devout Buddhist, Empress Dowager Feng encouraged all efforts in building temples, sculpting statues, and transcribing scriptures. She promoted education among the illiterate Xianbei people with a primary focus on Han culture. The cultural integration reflected in Cave 16 might very well be something Empress Dowager Feng would have been pleased to see. However, there's something odd about the cave dedicated to her late husband. The walls surrounding the main Buddha statue in this cave are adorned with Buddhist niches and donor statues divided into upper, middle and lower layers. Those in the upper and middle layers are arranged in an orderly fashion, while those in the lower layer appear disorganized. The east wall houses a statue of two Buddhas sitting next to each other, beneath which many donor statues have been removed. Some scholars believe the donor statues were destroyed due to the power struggle during Empress Dowager Feng's reign. The intact donor statues feature typical Xianbei upper garments and hats. Given that the destroyed donor statues occupied the best positions in the large Buddha niche, there is speculation that they might have represented close relatives of Emperor Xianwen. Tanyao's five caves are the imperial grottos of the Northern Wei dynasty. Who would dare act so wantonly in these caves? Empress Dowager Feng, who ruled with absolute power at that time, was the only one who had the right to remove these donor statues, effectively evicting Emperor Xianwen's family from Yugang. So why did she decide to get rid of these donor statues? Zhang Haiyan is a photographer who specializes in cultural relics. He has over 30 years experience since he began his work in the 1980s. 就是每拍一次勇敢，感觉都不一样。哎，进一次洞窟，感觉有新的感觉。As a photographer, his job is to find beauty in these statues and to capture the subtle play of light and shadow. 
However, to truly understand the Yungang grottos, one needs to know the historical details behind these statues. In 469 AD, the cry of a woman from the harem began to disrupt the harmonious atmosphere within the imperial palace. In June, the two-year-old Tulba Hong was made crown prince. Subsequently, Empress Dowager Fung resolutely demanded the execution of his biological mother, Lady Li, following Xianbei custom. The system of killing the Crown Prince's mother had been in place for over 60 years. However, during that time, the political conditions within the court and without had changed significantly, and such executions were no longer strictly necessary. On the one hand, Lady Lee was the birth mother of the Crown Prince, even though he had been brought up in the charge of Empress Dowager Fung. On the other hand, Lady Li's father was an ally of Emperor Xian Wen, who, as he grew older, found himself in an increasing power struggle with Empress Dowager Fung. Emperor Xian Wen had begun to show himself as an able ruler. He had the support of many ministers and was growing more influential by the day. He began to confront Empress Dowager Fung, posing a threat to her. As her fears grew, she found this situation unacceptable. She turned her attention to the Crown Prince, who, being in her charge, could be directly controlled. With custody of the two-year-old Crown Prince, she aimed to get more support for her struggle with Emperor Xian Wen. The court debates over state policies between the two factions often escalated into heated arguments. The extent of their discord is unknown and the specifics lost in history. While Empress Dowager Fung had returned the reins of power and therefore avoided direct confrontation with Emperor Xian Wen temporarily, in 470 AD their conflict reached a peak due to a man named Li Yi. Li was Empress Dowager Fung's lover. Young, handsome and talented, Li Yi held a prominent position in government. Empress Dowager Fung frequently summoned him to the Imperial Palace on the pretext of discussing official matters, but their relationship was an open secret. Emperor Xian Wen targeted Li Yi in a massive purge. Though historical records simply describe Empress Dowager Fung's reaction with the word displease, her outrage over this execution was the major factor in their confrontation. It would ultimately lead to Emperor Shan Wen's abdication. In the year following Li Yi's execution, Emperor Shan Wen toured He Shi and, after passing through Yin Shan Mountain, returned to Ping Chang. He then unexpectedly announced his abdication. Some scholars speculate that it was probably during this time that the donor statues representing Xian Wen's family in Cave 16 were removed. The removal of the donor statues was likely a warning from Empress Dowager Fung to Emperor Xian Wen. Subsequently, she forced him to step down. Although Emperor Xian Wen nominated his uncle, the King of Jing Zhao, as his successor, the last act of defiance was suppressed by ministers loyal to Empress Dowager Fung. As a result, the 18-year-old Emperor Xian Wen was forced to abdicate in favor of his five-year-old son making him the youngest retired emperor in Chinese history. It's said that during the abdication ceremony, the young prince cried, saying to his father, replacing you distresses me deeply. For a five-year-old to speak such words would seem heartbreaking. The child prince then ascended the throne as Emperor Xiao Wen, firmly under the control of his guardian, Empress Dowager Fung. Xiao 
，他让孝文帝，他让陪孝文帝读书的人都成了内奸，啊，每个人每天都必须汇报孝文帝的一件错误，如果没有汇报一件错误的话，就算你不合格。所以你看他的，既是严父，又是慈母。啊，在这个，这确实就是一种皇帝的养成方法，啊，它不是一种普通老百姓家孩子的养育方法，是吧？这个里面有他的职业特征在里头，也有他或者天然的母性在里头，啊，也有他对于拓跋大魏王朝的这种深远的寄托在寄托在里头。Having the son succeed his father was a compromise to resolve the escalating conflict between Emperor Shan Wen and Empress Dowager Feng. However, Emperor Shan Wen was not content with this arrangement. The Yongang Middle Period Caves, constructed after the original first five caves of Tanyao, are even more resplendent and gorgeous. Compared to the majestic earlier caves, these statues and caves have transitioned to a more peaceful and palatial style. While the large-scale construction of the Wuzhou Hill Grottoes was underway, there was an undercurrent in the Northern Wei's court. Emperor Shan Wen no longer lived regularly in the Imperial Palace. He built another palace, named the Chongguang Palace, in the northern suburbs of Pingchang. Eminent monks and scholars often frequented this new palace until the Luye Yuan grottoes emerged. From the 20th century onward, many people have searched for Luye Yuan. This site is about 10 kilometers from Da Tong. The large sandy gully used to be a river in ancient times. On the hill by the river sits a temple, an ideal place for Zen meditation. The Buddha statues in the temple weren't built during the Northern Wei period, but traces from that era have been found here. This is the first time the Archaeologists discovered 11 caves with a central statue cave and five Zen caves on each side. The design closely resembles Tan Yao's five caves from the early Yungang period. Additionally, this place was once a Northern Wei royal hunting ground where wild deer roamed. Emperor Xian Wen, a devout Buddhist, established his spiritual home here. Gong 信仰佛教要禅修，要修禅，怎么修呢？就坐在那里头去修禅，所以叫禅窟。我们现在叫鹿野院。The deposed emperor Shan Wen must have invested much time and effort in his most important sanctuary and living place. The construction of the Yungang Middle Period Caves is generally believed to have begun in 471 AD, when Emperor Shao Wen ascended the throne, and ended in 494 AD, when the Northern Wei moved its capital to Luoyang. But initially, Emperor Shao Wen was too young to manage such massive royal construction. 
Thus, the real builder was likely the power behind the throne, Empress Dowager Fung. Does this mean that Emperor Xianwen, after his forced retirement, reduced his involvement in Yunggang affairs? This is Cave 11 of the Yunggang Grottoes from the Middle Period. The Buddha statue and two Bodhisattva statues were not crafted during the Northern Wei period. The slender figures of the Bodhisattvas and their intricate decorations exhibit characteristics of Liao dynasty sculptures. The numerous niches inside the cave also lack uniformity, suggesting they were carved by two teams at two different times. Yingzao 高了就高了。挖回去也就顺了顺势去再雕造,没有进一步做这个曲屏的这样一个工序。这说明呢,它不是一个统一的造像团队。In the uneven background of Cave 11, a highlight appears on the western wall. Seven magnificent and beautiful standing Buddha statues. Each one has a serene and beautiful countenance, exhibiting grace and charm. The reason for the mid-project change of sculptors in Cave 11 remains a mystery. However, historical events from the same period offer plausible speculation. During the construction of the mid-period Yunggang Grottoes, Emperor Torba Hong was building his Lu Ye Yuan Grottoes. However, a stele from the Jin dynasty suggests he did not completely desert the Yunggang project. In 1947, Su Bai, a teacher from the archaeology department of Peking University, while organizing books in the library, found a passage in Yongle Encyclopedia detailing the history of the Yunggang grottoes. This passage transcribed during the Qing dynasty, came from a long-lost Jin dynasty stele titled Great Jin's Reconstruction of the Wuzhou Hill Grotto Temple, or the Jin Stele. It documents the establishment of the Yunggang Grottoes and the construction activities in the Tang, Liao, and Jin dynasties. Xianwen的时期的洞窟啊,一定是不同的。on July 20th, 476 AD, Emperor Shanwen died in mysterious circumstances. While historical records about the cause of his death are ambiguous, it is widely believed that he was poisoned by Empress Dowager Fung. The construction of several caves he was involved in, including Cave 11, halted. Eventually, these caves became dilapidated and overrun with weeds. To the cultural relics photographer Zhang Haiyan, every statue in the Yunggang grottoes is beautiful, including all the small Buddha figures, the bodhisattvas and flying apsaras on the walls. The key is to find the right angle in presenting them. Over the years, he has photographed many seemingly unremarkable Buddha statues, and each one is captivating. This is a 
。然后呢，这个觉得最好的一组就是搭脚手架，在明窗上边搭明搭了脚手架上去以后，斜侧拍了一张照片。这张照片呢，很好的表现了他的观、法纪和这个佛像的造型。这张照片呢，在国家邮政总局印了邮票。Over 1,500 years ago, after the death of Emperor Xianwen, the powerful Empress Dowager Feng found a unique way to make her presence in politics felt. She projected her ideal world onto the cliffs of Wuzhou Hill, and her dream of a Buddhist paradise became ever more defined. Here are Cave 7 and Cave 8 of the Yungang Grottoes. Although a four-story wooden structure built during the early Qing dynasty once covered only the antechamber of Cave 7, these two caves share many similarities, such as the square space, flat walls and ceilings. Both caves feature identical themes and layouts. The northern wall of the rear chamber of Cave 7 is divided into two levels, as is Cave 8. The upper level of Cave 7 houses a large trapezoidal niche, while the lower level has a round niche. Cave 8 follows the same design. On the east and west walls of both caves, there's a row of seated Buddha statues at the top and a row of donor statues at the bottom. The main part in the middle consists of four levels, with eight symmetrical Buddha niches on each side. They share the same Buddhist concept and artistic style. These two caves, with their symmetrical layout, form a cohesive cultural entity and are referred to as the Twin Caves. They represent a new cave form and mark the transition from the early period to the middle period of the Yungan Grottoes. Some scholars believe such transition is exclusive to the Yungan Grottoes and occurred under very specific historical conditions. The Yungan is a very strong tradition. The first time of the Chinese history, the first time of the Chinese history, the first time of the Chinese history, 呃，在石窟前面盖了十个寺庙，辽代十四，十四的基础就是云岗石窟、双窟，像五灵窟是个双窟，七八窟是个双窟，九十双窟。双窟它的背后就是并成二世这种政治的背景。Anyone who has read the Book of Wei would be familiar with the term Two Saints, which was frequently mentioned in its documentation of various events in the Northern Wei Dynasty. This term refers to the two rulers of that time, Empress Dowager Feng and her grandson, Emperor Xiao Wen, with the former holding real power. She masterminded the Yungang project and turned her favorite Buddhist story into concrete form. A story in the Lotus Sutra captivated her. In the pure realm of the Eastern world, a Buddha named Pradhutaratna vowed that after he attained Buddhahood, wherever the Lotus Sutra was preached, both he and his stupa would emerge from the earth. Later, when Sakyamuni was teaching the Lotus Sutra, a stupa indeed emerged in front of him. Prabhuta Ratna, in the stupa, praised Sakyamuni before opening the stupa and sharing his seat with Sakyamuni. While the tale of the two Buddhas sitting side by side does not hold profound meaning in the Buddhist scripture, it was an important political symbol during the construction of the mid-period Yungan grottoes. Cave 7 is the earliest of the mid-period grottoes. 
The upper level of the northern wall in its rear chamber features Maitreya Bodhisattva, a leaning Buddha and pensive Bodhisattva, while the large round niche in the lower level houses Sakyamuni and Prabhutaratna Buddha sitting together, though their faces have become unrecognizable due to erosion. While earlier Yungan caves also had statues of two Buddhas seated side by side, it was from Cave 7 onwards that the practice of placing such statues at the center of the wall became popular. The upper niche of Cave 7 features Maitreya, the future Buddha. This, along with the two Buddhas in the lower niche, implies that Empress Dowager Feng was the present Buddha, while Emperor Xiao Wen the future Buddha. Additionally, Cave 7, in conjunction with Cave 8, symbolizes a transition from the Maitreya in the upper niche of Cave 7 to a Buddha in that of Cave 8, and from the two seated Buddhas in the lower niche of Cave 7 to a single seated Buddha in that of Cave 8. This transition signifies that eventually the political landscape of two saints would change and Emperor Xiao Wen would be the sole ruler. But before that, he was just like the Maitreya, cultivating himself to attain Buddhahood. Is this how Empress Dowager Feng interpreted the Buddhist scriptures? Just like Caves 7 and 8, Caves 9 and 10 share the same construction concepts. They share the same spatial pattern and statuary themes, almost like twin brothers. Their front and rear chambers, as well as the cave walls, are distinct and unified at the same time. The grottos and statues reflecting Buddhist teachings and aesthetic ideals serve as a vivid metaphor for the political landscape of the dynasty and the joint ruling of Empress Dowager Feng and Emperor Xiao Wen. This twin cave design would become a major trend in Pingchang. During the middle and later periods of the Yungan grottos, there were nearly 400 statues of two Buddhas sitting side by side in grottos large and small across Wuzhou Hill. The Yungan cave statues from these periods, characterized by twin caves, depict a myriad of vivid life scenes and exude tangible vitality. Through these statues, people from our secular world get to see the land of bliss. Visions originating from Brahmanism in India transform into deities with multiple heads and arms, like Kumara riding peacocks and Maheshvara riding sacred oxen. Apsaras, Yakshas and various other deities attend a joyful feast infused with vivid colors and harmonious melodies. As the Buddha preaches, flowers rain down from the sky. Empress Dowager Feng might have been a ruthless and calculating politician, but she was also a sentimental and romantic woman. While the twin caves and two Buddhas represent the political landscape, the many other sculptures and designs from the same period feature an intricate and delicate style, in sharp contrast with the simple grandeur of the early grottos. The femininity of these sculptures can be seen as an expression of Empress Dowager Feng's emotions. For instance, atop the archway on the southern wall of Cave 7 are carved six graceful figures known as the Offering Devas. Their hair buns are cloud-like, their smiles serene and their postures elegant. Such feminine portrayals were rare in earlier Yungan grottos. Below these six figures are four celestial musicians, seemingly ready to take flight. The sereneness of the Offering Devas contrasts with the animation of the celestial musicians. 
Cave 8, the twin of Cave 7, also features six offering devas in corresponding positions. While some kneel on one leg, others sit cross-legged, each with a unique hand gesture, displaying relaxed and unrestrained postures. These figures are both symmetrical to and distinct from those in Cave 7, showing lively variations within the same theme. Meanwhile, the celestial musicians below are replaced by a row of devout and solemn Buddha's disciples in this cave. Caves 7 and 8 introduce a refined sculptural style to Yungang. Every corner of the caves exemplifies intricacy and precision. While the niches and Buddha statues with various expressions are undoubtedly magnificent, even the corners and edges are meticulously carved. The lion beside the seated Buddha is fierce and majestic, a masterpiece of animal carving. The ceilings of both caves feature intricately carved images of flying apsaras holding lotuses. This structure, known as a caisson ceiling, was common in wooden architecture beginning in the Han and Wei dynasties. Yet the Yungang craftsmen skillfully recreated this wooden design in stone, 12 meters in the air. With the unexplained death of Emperor Xianwen, the Luye Yuan grottoes pass into history, while the Yungang grottoes flourished even further as a place where those in power express their artistic, religious and political visions. Among the few historic records we have about the appearance of the Yungang grottoes during that glorious era, the most notable is the Commentary on the Waterways classic by Li Dao Yuan the great geographer of the Northern Wei dynasty. He described the grottoes being surrounded by grand hills, rivers and temples adjacent to forests. Over time, while the caves and statues on Wuzhou Hill remained, the temples and palaces have long disappeared. At the top of the Yungang grottoes, there remains a Ming Dynasty fortress. Before the Ming era, the Yungang grottoes were known as the Wuzhou Hill Grotto Temple. It was only after the fortress, named Yungang Fort, was built during the Ming Dynasty that the name Yungang became popular. In 2011, archaeologists made a new discovery near the fort, a Buddhist pagoda base, octagonal on the outside with a square base at the centre. The octagonal part was confirmed to be from the Liao Dynasty, while the square base was from the Northern Wei Dynasty. Obviously, the pagoda had been renovated during the Liao dynasty using the foundation laid by the Northern Wei dynasty. Archaeologists also found fragments of crucibles in an iron smelting furnace and relics from the Liao dynasty overlapping with those from the Northern Wei, which included pillar bases, tiles and more. West of Cave 39, Archaeologists also made an exhilarating discovery, extensive remains of a Northern Wei temple. The temple is centered around a pagoda courtyard, which includes the pagoda base, corridors in different directions, as well as chimneys and cooking pits. The area, equivalent to eight or nine basketball courts, once served as the living quarters and scriptural translation centre for monks. The findings reminded them of the ten major temples described in the Jin Stili and the densely packed palaces described by Li Dao Yuan. They realised the Yungang grottoes might yet hold so much more. Caves dot the hillside, stretching from west to east. Numerous holes in the front cave walls 
and remnants of pillar bases can still be seen between the hill and the dried up course of the old Wujo River. This would indicate that there were numerous wooden structures, both atop the hill and outside the caves. Study on the old river course suggested that the water level of the Wujo River was about 10 meters below the cave steps. This implies that the buildings on top of the grottoes would be at least 50 meters above the water. These wooden structures and the temples on the hilltop were reflected in the Wujo River, creating a magnificent scene reminiscent of Li Daoyuan's description. Caves 7 and 8 are believed to have been carved not long after the construction of Tan Yao's five caves. In theory, the construction of caves 7 and 8 should still be overseen by the monk Tan Yao. However, the statues of these two caves, although closely related to the early caves in terms of artistic modeling and carving style, differ significantly in cave form the design and layout of wall art and statue themes from Tan Yao's five caves. So were these caves built under Tan Yao's supervision? In the Northern Wei Dynasty's most important record of Buddhist activities, the biography of eminent Buddhists and Taoists, the name Tan Yao gradually disappears after the mention of Tan Yao's five caves, to the extent that even his years of birth and death become obscure. Given that he held the foremost Buddhist position as monk superintendent for years, and elevated Buddhist statue carving to its pinnacle, it's puzzling how such a prominent monk's later years could remain undocumented. In contrast, when Fa Guo, the first leading monk in the Northern Wei dynasty, passed away, the emperor personally attended his funeral. In August 479 AD, another Buddhist temple, the Su Yuan Temple, was founded north of Pingchang on Fangshan Hill. Sung Xian, head of the Su Yuan Temple, had become the monk superintendent by then, while Tan Yao vanished without a trace. The Jin Stili mentioned a minister of the Qiang ethnicity named Wang Yu, who constructed the Chongjiao Temple between 484 AD and 489 AD. This temple bears a resemblance to Yungang's Caves 9 and 10 in both area and style. Historical accounts suggested that Wang Yu was a favored eunuch of Empress Dowager Feng. Some speculate that after the construction of Tan Yao's five caves, it was Wang Yu, not Tan Yao, who supervised the subsequent projects. This theory could account for the noticeable artistic shifts observed in the grottoes. Based on this logic, after completing Cave 16, Tan Yao might have left the Yunggang project. However, no matter who took over the position of artistic director of the Great Grottoes, the leader of the project remained to be Empress Dowager Feng, the Northern Wei's true ruler. This irrepressible woman hardened by long political struggle, aimed to further the integration and sinicization policies initiated by the founding emperor of the Northern Wei dynasty, Turba Gui.